In this video, we will show a subcutaneous onlay laparoscopic approach to a ventral hernia repair and repair of diastasis recti. The patient is a 37-year-old woman who presents with an umbilical and ventral hernia as well as a diastasis of the rectus muscle. A 3-centimeter transverse incision is made 2 centimeters superior to the pubic bone. A 5-millimeter trocar was inserted under direct visualization at the midpoint between the midline and each anterior superior iliac spine. Monopolar electrocautery was used to dissect the anterior rectus sheath from the subcutaneous tissue. The dissection was continued laterally to each anterior superior iliac spine and superiorly beyond the costal margin. An umbilical hernia and a superumbilical ventral hernia were identified. The fat-containing hernias were dissected from the anterior subcutaneous tissue and reduced. As the dissection was extended towards the xiphoid and costal margin, care was taken to avoid injury to the fascia and to cauterize perforating vessels as they were encountered. The costal margin is visualized. A needle was inserted just below the xiphoid to confirm its location. The edges of the diastasis were marked using an ink tip which had been removed from the marking pen. The preperineal fat associated with each of the hernias was amputated and removed. The diastasis was plicated using a 3-0 V-lock suture from the xiphoid process to the pubic bone. The suture was continually tightened as we continued inferiorly. Care was taken to ensure bites were substantial but shallow enough to avoid risk of intra-abdominal injury. The inferior aspect of the plication was completed via open approach through the 3 centimeter suprapubic incision. A ruler was introduced in order to assess what size mesh would be accommodated in the subcutaneous space. The defect was 25 centimeters from the xiphoid to the pubic bone and 15 centimeters horizontally. The macroporous mesh was cut to a size of 25 centimeters by 15 centimeters with rounded edges. The mesh was introduced into the subcutaneous space. The mesh was attached by vicral suture anteriorly and then laterally. The mesh was fixed to the anterior rectus sheath along the midline with a 3-0 V-lock suture. Bleeding was controlled with continuation of the running V-lock suture. Finally, the inferior pole of the mesh was fixed with vicral suture via open approach. Evacil glue was used to affix the mesh to the abdominal wall. Jets of air were used to evenly spread this fiber and glue. The umbilicus was tacked to the anterior abdominal wall using 3-0 vicral suture. Two 19 French Blake drains were placed in the subcutaneous space to avoid seroma. The subcutaneous space was deflated under direct vision and the skin incisions were closed. So um, the video actually started before I had a chance to say, uh, first of all, thank you to Sages for the opportunity to present uh, this video. But uh, what we're describing here is something that we started doing at Montefiore Medical Center pretty recently. Dr. Flavio Malcher, uh, uh, came to us and, and we started doing these procedures. And at this point, we have 13 that we've done this this year, so we'll be also uh, presenting soon our, uh, our our case series. But 
um, for, for patients, especially with a relatively low BMI, who present with a diastasis and a ventral hernia, this has been a pretty uh, uh, interesting and, and successful repair for us. Thank you.